So this last question is, uh, is the gospel relevant today in the modern world? Um, like I wrote in my book, uh, my, my booklet is called Modern Science and Philosophy Destroy Christian Theology. Um, can I, I'd like to read a pass, just a paragraph from my booklet and see what you have to say about that, okay? Okay. Okay, I said, uh, here's a way to basically phrase the gospel. It's, it's silly, but it's actually factually true. So, okay, here it goes. God, who knows all things past and present, made humans. But it turns out that humans are sinners, and this stirs up God's wrath, even though he knew it would happen before it did, because God's all-knowing. How could this situation be fixed? Well, God, who is all-knowing, decided to come to earth and sacrifice himself to appease himself, because Jesus is God's son, and he's also God, the same being, because there's only one God in mono monotheism. In summary, God sacrificed himself to appease his own wrath. And God, who is immortal, died on a cross and came back to life, which is a contradiction, of course. And here's the icing on the cake. If you know and reject this message, for example, because the message is nonsense, you will be tortured in hell for eternity. So, I mean, basically, I, I think the gospel is totally nonsense that God sacrificed himself to appease himself. It's, I mean, the whole thing is just goofy. Okay. Benny, I love Benny, I hope we can meet up and talk, mate. Because you know, the more I'm getting to know you, the more I'm getting to uh, love and, and respect you, mate. And I'd love to talk to you more. But as you would say in your debates and discussions, you know, facts, facts, facts. That's what you often say. You know, and we've got to deal with facts. In one John chapter one, it says that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled of the word of life. For the life was manifested, and we have seen it, and bear witness, and shown to you that the eternal life which we said the Father was manifested in us, but which we have seen and heard, declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And the fact is that Christ made a claim that he would die on a cross, and he died on that cross. And now you've got to assess whether you agree with his assessment that he is the Son of God or not. The fact is that he did die as a claimed Messiah. Let me, let and, me ask you a question you know, about that. Let, let me just finish. Let me just finish. And for me, I believe that his claim is true. I, I believe when I look at his life, when I look at the Gospels, I don't see, I see someone um, that it would be more a miracle. He, you know, the four Gospels would have to be compared to four Shakespeare's, you know, four great writers making up a person, it seems more incredible to believe that than to believe that he is the Son of God. And, you know, secondly, they you, copied you assume from each rationality, other. you assume morality about, about these things, which you've never been able to uh, account for. Well, and thirdly... No, 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 come on, know, we, can't, we can't bring I, up I one, two, three things. We, al we only have a few minutes here. Sorry, bro. L let, me, let me ask you, do you believe that... You talked about Jesus dying on the cross. Do you believe that Jesus... Before he came to earth, he existed in heaven eternally? Yes, I believe in the and, Trinity, yes. And, and do you believe that Jesus knew the future, knows everything that's going to happen? Well, it says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he was in the beginning, and then he says, and the Word, verse 14, became flesh and dwelt among us. Right, right. Was, Jesus, was Jesus in heaven, though, before he was born on earth, was he in heaven and he knew all of the future because he's all-knowing? Is that true? He, he says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So he was the Word, he was God. And he knew the future while it, before he came to earth, is that true? Well, he was God. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So Jesus knew the future, right? That's what, well, he's God, I've just said it. Okay, it's so... It's interesting, though. Wait a minute. I'll answer, but it's interesting you're throwing all these questions now, but I'll... I'll because I'll, I'm leading I'll, up I'll to something. Before. I'm trying to lead Sorry? up to something. If Jesus knew, if I Jesus don't... is God, and he knew everything before it happened, he knew he was going to die and come back to, come back, I mean, I don't know how a God could even die, because it's supposed to be immortal, but supposedly he knew in advance he was going to die, and everything was going to work out, and yet here he's supposed to be in the garden fretting over it. How, why would he fret about it if he already knew it was going to happen, and it was already a success and all that? Bernie, Bernie, I love you, mate, and I respect you, but Bernie, you know, it, it says in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God. That's, that's in terms of the, the Spirit. When, but it says in Philippians chapter 2, 
he thought about it, he became, you know, he, he thought it not robbed it to be equal with God, but made himself with no reputation and humbled himself even to death at the cross. So the, the, the God became a man, so he's human. That's why he wept at the, at the, uh, the, at the, the grave of Lazarus. Now, I, don't, I, I can't fully explain. Uh -huh. I know that you're going to say it's a cop-out, no. but I can't fully explain how the ink, that God eternal can become a man in terms of two natures in one person. For me, even in physics, there's what is called, uh, amongst physicists, the boundary of the unknowable. There's a point at which we, we can't know. That's that boundary. And when the infinite comes to the finite, it's beyond our conception. But the Bible clearly teaches that Jesus was a human as well as, as God. And, you know, and so that he wept. Well, the, and he was in the garden. Yeah. And, and, he, and, he, and he was struggling. Well, the, 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 the mystery, the complexity is because there's philosophical inconsistencies. I mean, if you say God is all knowing and Jesus is fully God, and yet he doesn't know the future, he doesn't know. I mean, obviously Jesus didn't know it. I mean, Jesus, what kind of God is this? Here he is, a little baby. He, he doesn't even know how to walk or talk. He's a toddler. What kind of God is this? At some point, I mean, he never does. I, I don't know. At some point, does he ever say, oh, wow, I just got all awareness. I know everything. Or he never did. I mean, if, if he's actually limited, then he's not really fully God. It's kind of like, it's like Mike Tyson is one of the best boxers ever, but you take away his boxing skill. He's no longer Mike Tyson. If you take away okay. God's all-knowing capabilities, he's no longer God. And well, can, that's the I problem. You're there? trying to can say I, Jesus is I, fully God and fully man, but yet he's not, but yet he's somehow limited. Uh, all right. I'll, I'll let, I've, I've, I've given you a good go, so I've let you throw a few, few punches at me, bro. I mean, I, um, I, I, I think it's amazing that, I mean, and, and Jesus, here's Jesus. Okay, like... Was Jesus ever sick? I mean, he goes around healing people. Okay, well, you know, he's going to heal people with uh, even bringing people back to, to death, like Lazarus. Well, he probably never had a flu. He probably never even had a headache, never had a migraine. A migraine is a pain in the head, okay? So he never even had a pain in the head. So now we're to believe that, so, so now we're to believe that he was tortured and whipped and everything, and it, it gave him tremendous pain. Well, how do we know? If he's really God and he could take away pain, Maybe he didn't feel anything. Maybe he, he just faked it. Why would you... Ernie, I mean, all this Ernie, stuff doesn't make sense. Ernie, I love you, mate, but it's all over, mate. It's all finished. I'm, I'm letting you land these punches on me, but it's all over. You've not explained rationality. You've not explained morality. These are last desperate attempts, and I can answer these... What we're talking about uh, is... By the... Christian theology, if you, if you read Philippians chapter 2, it says... Uh, he made himself with no reputation, and, and, and there was a and on, there was a veiling of the Godhead. I know. In that he came and humbled himself, and that passage helps to answer those questions. So it encourages. No, it does not. It does. But the question. Wait a minute. The questions that Bernie's throwing. Read Philippians two in the light of those questions. It doesn't answer anything because you're saying Jesus was fully God, but then you're saying he was limited. So that means he was not God. No, the, you have to understand the purpose and the plan of why he became incarnate. He became incarnate because it says in Romans 5, by one man's disobedience, many became unrighteous. By one man's obedience, many become righteous. So he's becoming, he's, he's coming on our behalf. And on our behalf, he had to be human. He had to, he had to be the person who was going to be our chief, our head, to take, to take our punishment. And so therefore, he had to be a human being, so he is a human okay. being, but he's also, he had to be God, because the sin that you and I commit has infinite implications. So th th there was a veiling of that Godhood. He was 100% God and 100% man, but there was a veiling of the Godhood in that some of that Godhood we were not allowed to see. Okay, well, the uh, human I, side. Jason, actually we're out of time now, the show's over. So I just want to say thanks for calling in. Um, we didn't get through very much, but thanks for calling in. Bernie, thanks, mate. I hope we keep in touch, mate. Okay.